This is Terry Rose, and I wanted to share a story that I wrote about the time when I really claimed to be an atheist, and then I had my near-death experience. I called it Confession from a Recovering Atheist on How to Activate Your Superpower. And I said that I get it when people act hateful about religion, God, and the mention of Jesus Christ, because I confess I was right there too years ago. I did my best to be as irreverent as possible when somebody got in my face about anything related to religion. I smile now when I recall the shock of moving to the South. I'd never had someone zero in on me when I stepped from my car in a grocery store parking lot before. They would demand to know if I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Sometimes I was ordered to tell them if I was a Christian. My favorite response was that if I was, I was too embarrassed to admit it after seeing so many Christians acting so unchristlike. My bad attitude got its start during my young life. I saw too many scenes where preachers, teachers, and authority figures pointed a finger at others and excused their own bad behavior. I had a real problem with people who acted hateful and unforgiving towards others. They would do it all the way to the church steps on Sunday, and then smile and walk inside, believing they were saved. I remember asking questions and getting in trouble for it. I was told to listen and not talk. But I had an analytical mind, and I had to make sense of things. The things I was taught about God and death just didn't make sense. Two plus two did not add up to four. I was told that God was my father, that I was God's child, and that God loved me. I also heard the constant threat that God was going to send me to hell to burn forever. How could any father's disciplinary plan be to burn his child? If God was like that, then how could God really love that child? Logic, or common sense, was nowhere to be found, so I became disillusioned and hateful towards God. It didn't help that some of the self-righteous religious figures in my life were caught enjoying sins of the flesh. Of course, they were forgiven because Jesus died for their sins. They were going to heaven, but I was going to hell. And then something unexpected happened. At the height of my bad attitude, I had a spiritual experience, an NDE, a white light near-death experience. It happened during a bad car wreck where it sure seems that I had died. I left my body, flew through a dark tunnel, and emerged into a place that no words can describe. It was filled with brilliant white light and nothing but feelings of bliss and unconditional love. In that place, I discovered the true essence and meaning of God. God was only pure, unconditional love, very different from the one that had been used to threaten me. That one was supposedly waiting to judge and punish me, but he was nowhere to be found. I experienced only the power and importance of love. From that moment, love, with a capital L, became a state of being and something I revered. It stopped being just a word. It stopped being a feeling about something I desired. It stopped being associated with the sexual attraction I felt when I was swooning over a guy who made my heart go pitter-patter. Love became a living, healing, energizing power in a class all by itself. I think my belief in its power and my willingness to use it, almost as if it was a weapon of sorts, is the reason I've seen countless miracles happen when I focus it. I've discovered that you can train yourself to feel it at varying intensities that grow as you do. You can practice feeling it in your body and heart and create intentions for problem solving with it. You can create an intention when you need help with something. See it surrounding the situation, and imagine the love in printed light going out to resolve it. The results I've seen from practicing that process have been truly miraculous. No, at first it isn't as easy as falling off a log, as they say, unless you're a natural. It's a skill that you have to develop. Like with anything that requires skill, it can seem like work at first. I had to work on things like creative visualization. I had to practice seeing things in my mind and then develop the ability to keep my mind and attention focused. I had to get my body used to feeling the vibration of love or even gratitude, appreciation, compassion, kindness. Then I had to train it to feel those higher vibrations on command. Of course, like always, I got better with practice. Thankfully, that's something anyone can do. I call that practice the White Light Method of Manifesting Miracles, or WLMMM. Using it effectively can change your life in ways you probably wouldn't even imagine. If you don't learn how to use it effectively, 
With all the stress of living in today's world, chances are good that you're resonating negativity that's helping attract more blocks to your happiness. Technology now shows that we emit particles of light and resonate energy from our bodies into our biofield. Your thoughts and emotions regulate the frequency of energy that resonates from you. So your thoughts and feelings are working for or against you all of the time. You have a source of power that may be going to waste instead of helping you. Or worse, it may be being used destructively if you're thinking angry, frustrated, or fearful thoughts. Thankfully, you have a choice and can decide to change some things. WLMMM is a practice of creating thoughts on purpose, stamping those intentions on the light you're emitting, fueling your intentions with emotions, and sending them out into the energy field we live in. If your life is stressful and unhappy, can you see how you're working against yourself? You can start paying attention and change that. That's how you take an active part and use your energy to give life to your dreams. You have the power to do that. Wielding that power and using it to solve your own problems as they arise and those of the world is what I hope you will join me in doing. Love is a force that causes change. It affects those around you in a very tangible way. Love creates a state called coherence, a desirable state that promotes health, inner peace, happiness, and fulfilling relationships. When it resonates from you, it helps others shift into a more peaceful, healthy state of harmony as indicated by research on coherence. When you understand what's been discovered, you never have to feel helpless or stuck again. Intention experiments done by scientists show laboratory results that are awe-inspiring. They show that our energy is powerful. It helps give shape to matter. We could be using that energy to heal ourselves, our loved ones, and to make the world a better place. It could be creating health, happiness, peace, and prosperity. We have a creative force within that can provide every solution we need. You just have to start paying attention to inner guidance, notice intuition, and learn to read the language of feelings that speaks to you. There is exciting new science and validation that's surfacing all the time. You no longer have to wonder if these practices will really make a difference when you do them. Without question, they do. If you'd like to learn how to use three key scientific discoveries like I do to get results that seem miraculous, just go to bridgetoyourself.com.